Hey, it's Simon with IP Exchange at Hardware Pioneers Max 2024. I'm here with Simon from Bleacon, and they are doing something very different with Bluetooth. So, um, Simon, first of all, can you just introduce yourself to our audience and what you do at Bleacon? Sure. So, yeah, I'm Simon Ford, um, and I'm, uh, I guess, CEO of Bleacon. Um, and uh, Bleacon is uh, bringing IoT connectivity to Bluetooth Low Energy. Um, so. That's a very strange concept because we're used to thinking Bluetooth is um, like kind of a short, short connectivity. Um, so um, yeah, can you explain a bit of how you're using Bluetooth to connect to the cloud? Oh, absolutely, yeah. So yeah, as you say, Bluetooth Low Energy has grown up totally with mm. uh, personal area networking, yeah. right? It's it's basically a cable replacement yeah. of your peripheral to your phone or your laptop, mm. right? Um, but it's enjoyed incredible economies of scale thanks to that. And what you find is a load of companies trying to use that same amazing technology to do a more classically mm. IoT connectivity mm. use case, so uh, a device wanting to talk to a cloud back end. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're leveraging you know, all those benefits that you get out of Bluetooth, the low power, the low cost, um, the prevalence, um, the, the yeah. fact it's global. Um, and uh, effectively uh, adjusting that so it can be used in this IoT uh, connectivity use case. Cool. So, um, just to clarify, you're not producing chips, but you are working on the the infrastructure within the firmware where to be able to use Bluetooth with the cloud. That's exactly. How does it work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, one of the opportunities is um, Bluetooth low energy chips yeah. are already made in billions. Yeah, yeah. Right. And um, yeah, so we're, we're um, taking standard Bluetooth low energy chips. Uh, they, they're running firmware, that's the mm. Bleacon modem. Um, and that allows them to communicate to the back end. And I guess what's interesting is um, the hotspots, the cell towers, mm. um, they can be phones, they can be laptops, okay. uh, they can be uh, tablets, or they can be physical you know, gateways. Um, but they act much more like a classical um, cell tower. So that Bluetooth device, rather than pairing to a specific device, a specific you know phone or laptop, it's actually communicating directly with its uh, uh, cloud uh, backend via whatever hot hotspot happens to be nearby. So that's kind of interesting, as you say. It's it's not the yeah. classical use case of yeah. Bluetooth, but it's totally exploiting all the technology. Yeah. Um, but opening up, I guess, really interesting um, new use cases for that technology. Yeah. So um, obviously, you've got that. You've got that low power benefit. You've got yep. that kind of e economy of Bluetooth being relatively affordable compared to every other wireless technology. Yeah, now. yeah. I mean, it's it's one of the most successful wireless standards of all time, yeah. right? And it works. It's the same globally. Mm. So literally, the same product can work everywhere in the world. Um, and yeah, what what we're uh, opening up the opportunity is obviously that device to wake up wherever it is in the mm. world. And as long as there's a hotspot nearby, mm. um, it can um, yeah talk to your um, cloud backend for that device. Cool. And in terms of the new applications you see this um, kind of opening up, um, what kind of stuff do you have on mind? Well, that, yeah, it's a really interesting question. So um, what, uh, I guess if you look at IoT connectivity, mm. if you think cellular, mm. you know, the, the things that are prohibitive are cost, yeah. the size of the unit, and the amount of power they take. Right, but but actually the applica applications are all over the place. Um, if you can take that cost down, if you can take that power consumption down, and if you can take that area down, you know you're really pushing the capabilities of where you can put connectivity. So you know it might be healthcare devices, mm. it might be um, asset management devices, it might be yeah. just products where you're trying to get um, analytics or diagnostics okay. um, to see if the device is even working. But you know fundamentally, if you think of any. IoT use case, um, and you and you bring that down further um, in in cost point or PowerPoint. You know that's that's where this uh, sort of technology could be really applicable. Cool. So, um, would I be right in imagining a scenario that's kind of like? Because um, I guess I'm, you've got to still think about the connect. Do you have to think about the connectivity range as similar to classical Bluetooth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, in some sense, I think people underestimate how yeah. far Bluetooth low energy can go. So yeah, because they might think of five meters or something yeah. like that. But you know, thirty to fifty meters is very common. One hundred okay. meters is possible. Uh, even to be honest, even a kilometer is possible. Wow. Um, okay. But when you combine that yeah. with being able to deploy, so it is short range. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's not like a LoRa or a cellular long yeah. range connection, right? But the fact um, that you can deploy hotspots so easily, mm. much more yeah. like you would Wi-Fi or something yeah. like that, well, that changes the equation, right? Yeah. And the fact that devices maybe are moving, mm. so maybe a device is going through um, an environment and then only coming in range of a hotspot and then uploading, you know, your effective range, it, it doesn't matter so much. Yeah. You're uploading its history. Um, or maybe the hotspot is moving. So opportunistically, yeah. um, a hotspot comes into range and the device now has the opportunity to talk. 
So your effective coverage, yeah. uh, despite it being, let's say, 100 metres, actually could be a whole street, it could be a whole town, based on if the hotspots are moving around. So cool. it's a really interesting yeah. way of thinking it's, of yeah, coverage. You, and you kind of have to, like, you have to think about it differently to Bluetooth. It's like significantly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to be honest, if yeah. you think of it as straight Bluetooth, like just, you know, there's fixed hotspots, yeah. there's fixed Bluetooth, mm. but they don't have to pair and they can do that. You're already having a good time. Yeah, right? yeah. It, it's, a, it's a great solution, mm. even with those sort of... Uh, obvious constraints mm. but yeah well I think what's quite exciting is we're starting to see interesting use cases that can exploit some of the mobility yeah um, that perhaps cellular takes for granted yeah and things like Bluetooth and Wi-Fi don't you know, that's not part of their their protocol so yeah uh, yeah really interesting um, so it, um, obviously you're you're on the firmware side with the with the bleak on modem yep yeah so running on chips. Nordic chips primarily yeah. at the moment okay that's what I was gonna ask yep. like, uh, so at the moment you're supporting Nordic chips um, that's right. what uh, if an engineer was going to play with um, uh, Bleacon, uh, which chipsets would they be um, using? Yeah, okay, great question. Yeah, so I guess today today's quite exciting because we're making a lot of this technology available for mm. people to use. So if you've got, uh, you know, the primary modem we, uh, platform we support is the NRF52840. Cool. So if you have a NRF52840 dongle, or if you have a NRF52840 uh, uh, DK, or if you have like a C Jow mm. uh, module or something like that, you can go to our website, mm. download the firmware, and turn it into a Bleacon modem just like okay. that. Nice. Um, and then you can even host that from a different microcontroller. So you could wire it onto an Arduino, an STM, you know, whatever else you want to host it onto. And then the, the apps are available uh, in the respective app store, so you can just okay. go and download them. And you can sign up for a trial account of our network just by going to the bleakin.net website, set yourself up a network, and, nice. and actually try it all out now. Um, and if it seems uh, like it could make sense, you know, give us, a, give us a call and we can talk through the project. Yeah. Cool. And um, so we talked... Uh, quite a bit before this mm. so people have tried to do this before but you've actually managed to do do it yeah and, and um, i mean pe people do this every day mm. in companies mm. they they build this as this sort of you know they're solving this sort of problem to get mm. uh, bluetooth working for them mm. in-house mm. um but it's a you know it's a huge slog mm. and it's hard to do it properly mm. and you know everything like that but yeah we, we've seen that so much that we've effectively built it as a product yeah designed for integration that um you know an engineering team can um uh, very quickly pull into their own product um yeah so our customers they are design engineers you know they are technologists mm. um, um that are building these products and that that's our ideal customer yeah. Cool. So I think that's been a fantastic introduction to Bleak and at some point we'll have to do some demo videos. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, that'd be great. But yeah, it's been really good to meet you in person, Simon. Thank you very much. And yeah, if you want to turn Bluetooth into the same kind of behavior as a cellular network, yeah. uh, Bleak is your way to go. Yeah, thank you very much. Hey, where my engineers at?